Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at TheServerSide.com, and I want to quickly talk to you about the single responsibility model in Java. Now, as you can see here, I've got a little graphic that actually comes from the what is definition of solid, and the first letter there is single responsibility. What does single responsibility mean? Well, it means a class, a component should have one responsibility, not multiple responsibilities. And if a class starts doing too much, well, that's not good code. And as you can see here, I've got a friendly little number guesser game going. And one of the things I like to do is keep the results. So when I run the game, I can click that play button here. It says, hey, what's your guess? I'll guess the number five. It's too low. I'll guess the number nine. It's too high. I'll guess the number seven and Boom, seven is correct. And then you see over here, it lists the number of guesses and what the magic number was as well. I could actually play this game all day long if I really wanted to, but I wanted to take a look at the code. And in the code, you can see, well, there's just the normal number guesser game code that you see there. But look down here, we've got this game results class. And in this game results class, it does a couple of interesting things. It keeps track of each result, right? It keeps track of the number of guesses it took to guess the magic number, and it keeps track of the magic number too. So you got a whole history of all the games that are played, and that's held in this little property here called history. Even a little method that prints it out. But here's the thing, while this works, while it looks good, while we can actually see, you know, the print history method up here, this class that's a game result class, you know, it should only keep track of the number of guesses and the magic number. It shouldn't be keeping track of a history because it pollutes the class. Look, we get this history here, the array list, and then we end up with this method here, print the history, and the history really shouldn't be associated with an individual gameplay, right? The game result is different from the game history. So how do you fix it? How do you implement that single responsibility rule? Well, why don't we just create another class called game history, public class game history. Get the casing right there, add in my braces. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna take that list that's right there and move it over here. I think instead of history, I'll call it results, I like that better. It's a game history that has a set of results in it. Then over here, when the game result adds the history, we don't add it to itself. We say, hey, game history dot results dot add. And now we don't internally add the results. We add it to this other class up here. And you notice we've got this print history method here. Why don't we change that and put that up there? Why don't we even say game history dot print results? That might even be a better name to give. We got to fix all of our variables there, right? Because, you know, we changed the variable name to, to history. And it looks like I got a little error up here because here we say print history and we change the name to print results. So that should fix that little error there. What have we got here? It says uh, the public type gain history. Oh, we can't do public twice. I should have known that. Um, and now it looks pretty good. Of course, it's called game history, not game results. So we got to change that as well. And boom, look at that. We now have a pretty beautiful working Java class that has implemented the single responsibility principle. We now have a game result that keeps track of the results tells you the number of guesses, tells you what the magic number was for that gameplay. We've got a game history object that keeps track of the history of results. And you know what? Our game doesn't change that much. We we changed a method name over here. So that, you know, was a little bit of an update, but really it was a, a minor, minor imposition on the code. Let's go clear that code up over there, run the program one more time, see if it works. I'm gonna type in seven to start, it's correct, it prints it out. I'll type in one, it's too low, then I'll type in seven. If you haven't guessed, the number's already seven. I didn't randomize it just to keep things simple for testing. Now I'll do one, two, three, I'll just clicked OK there. Um, but you can see over here, it's actually keeping track of the uh, number of guesses. I probably should have put a, a little bit of hardening in the application there, but let's do that one more time. Type in seven. 
we get the results printed out. We do six and then we do seven and we get the results printed out and then we do one and then we do two and then we do three and then we do seven and boom, the results get printed out and you can see that it's all getting printed out over here from that print results method that is in the game history class. So there you go, that's the idea. Break out those uh, classes that are doing multiple things into multiple classes that do just one thing. Now be careful, there's always a trade-off, right? Like, I mean, you don't wanna have classes that just have one method in them, right? <laughs> you don't wanna go into these micro classes, but you know, get a balance in there and uh, implement the S in the single responsibility model correctly. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We got lots of great tutorials on object-oriented programming, Java, Git, GitHub, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter. And I'm just going to ask you this this one time, uh, subscribe on the YouTube.